All right, today we're going to be going through a 1998 Honda 450 Foreman carburetor. And we pulled this carburetor from the four-wheeler already, obviously, and the best way to clean it is to pull it off the four-wheeler. We're gonna go through and show you a couple of things, uh, and then we're gonna go through and rebuild this carburetor and clean it up. So, throttle cable coming in here. Um, it's got a, uh, a threaded end on the cable that runs into these threads here. And so to remove it and to do the, to remove it off the four-wheeler, you have to take this cover off. It's just one Phillips screw. And then it hooks down here in the bottom. So that carburetor pops off. Your cable runs down and it kind of runs around um, this pivot point here and attaches right here. So when you pull your throttle or push your throttle, it raises this up. And then also from the other side here, when you push your throttle, it, it opens that butterfly up, pulling more air through. Uh, that, uh, also your idle adjust is here. Clockwise is gonna turn your idle up. So you're gonna turn it in, and you can see when you're turning in, it's opening this butterfly even more. So you're gonna be sitting there with more air uh, flowing through there and uh, sucking more fuel through. So once we have that cap off, we can pull that throttle cable out, and it slides up and through this groove here. Now we're able to pull it from our four-wheeler. We've undone this sensor here, and then your choke cable will be the next thing. I don't have that choke plunger here to show you, but generally a 14 or, yeah, generally a 14 millimeter plastic cap that sits here. So we've got cap, uh, the, the choke cable runs through the cap, through a spring, and into a plunger, and that plunger just goes up and down when you pull that throttle, or pull that choke lever, it will um, pull that choke plunger up sucking more fuel and air through. So that's a couple things about the carburetor before we start into it. Next thing we're gonna do is pull this bottom bowl off. It's got four screws, four Phillips screws. And be careful taking these off, you don't round these heads off. Uh, some of these we can get vice grips on to pull them out if we do round the heads. Um, but several of these like back here are a challenge to get out if we round those heads off. A, a screwdriver with a tip like this on it is the best thing to use and just makes it a whole lot easier to get these screws out. We've got a primer plug down here, and we will go ahead and pull that off as well to show you what's underneath there. Get these four screws out. A lot of times this seals up, so you try pulling out, it won't come off. So I just take the screwdriver, tap on it, that kind of breaks that seal that is sealed up with this O-ring here, allowing you to be able to pull this off. Now we've already gone through and sprayed this all up and cleaned it up really good just so you could see um, what it looks like clean, but you want to make sure all these orifices are cleaned out really good. You can use gum out carbon choke cleaner is what we like to use. Then I take compressed air and spray it out really good. And you can just spray any of these orifices. Spray through here. And what this is, is your overflow. Um, so if, car, if your four wheelers bounce around on a trailer or on the trail or something, your, your fuel will uh, kind of slosh around in here dumping out here and coming out this bottom tab here. That's why it's crucial to have a vent line coming out of here that run, drains that fuel down beneath the motor, not directly on top of the motor. If it drains, if this tab is opened up, uh, no vent line on there, no hose, no drain tube on there, that fuel will dump right on your motor, discoloring your motor or potentially starting a fire. This plunger here is spring loaded, two Phillips screws, and it's not gonna pop off in a hundred pieces, but I kind of try to keep my thumb on there just to keep parts from, from going anywhere. And once you get those two pulled out, you've got your plunger in one hand here, we've got a spring here, and then we've got a rubber diaphragm here. And once you pull on that, that kind of sucks that fuel out of, um, into your carburetor there. So not, a, not very often do you need this part, but it is nice to have when you do need it. Make sure you clean that out with compressed air carbon choke cleaner as well. You wanna make sure that that diaphragm isn't ripped. Um, be really careful if you're spraying carbon choke cleaner on there that you don't stretch that diaphragm too much. They're pretty, get them pretty thin when you spray any kind of carbon choke cleaner on there or any kind of fuel to clean them out. Make sure this O-ring is good, going back together. Next thing, we're gonna pull this float off here. And a lot of times what you can do, um, sometimes you can take a small screwdriver, push on it, but other times it's a little bit more challenging than that. So these posts right here are uh, aluminum and they are uh, break very easily. So you want to be careful getting this pin out. Sometimes what we've done in the past is 
set something underneath of it, kind of supported this post, was able to take a small pick and at least get this pin started. Once you get it started, a lot of times it'll slide in and out pretty easily. So we've got our needle and seat here. On this model, your needle is replaceable, but your seat is not. So you want to inspect the seat really good. Make sure there's no indentions on this bottom uh, tab here. A lot of times stuff will come in your fuel line here, come through your carburetor, come sit right here, and uh, debris, piece of rubber, piece of the fuel line will get stuck in here, causing that fuel to hold open, causing fuel to continue to dump out this tab here. If it's not dumping out this tab, it's going into your motor. So you want to make sure that it is dumping out this tab if you have that problem. A lot of models will have a, an adjustable float on here. This kind is not. This is a plastic fixed um, needle and seat. So next we've got your main jet. And that comes in from the top here. This bottom, um, there's a slide that runs up and down here. You can see it right here. It's got a needle that runs directly into this uh, main jet. You can... Uh, get different sizes of these main jets depending on your riding conditions, your altitude, um, performance done to the four-wheeler, but that's your main jet there. You want to make sure that you take compressed air, make sure you can blow through it, take carbon choke cleaner, make sure you can blow through it, and then hold it up to light. You want to make sure you can see through that jet. They're a small port, but you want to make sure that you can see through it. Next is a pilot jet, and this is a very small port. and. It takes a small flat screwdriver and it's kind of down in there farther. You can see that there. So then you can just kind of shake it out there and it'll fall out. That's what your pilot jet looks like. Take compressed air, same thing. Take it, blow through it like that. Take carbon choke cleaner, clean it out. Then you can also take and blow on these ports as well to try to clean those out as well. Next jet comes in from the side here. It's got a rubber cap here. You can pull it. It's not going not gonna to do anything. You don't need to pull it. Uh, unless you're cleaning it out really good, but a lot of times you're a lot of times starting your problem is a pilot jet That's kind of a known problem Because it's such a small port um, Any kind of sand or debris in your fuel or just uh, Bad fuel can gum that pilot jet up causing issues. So this jet here same thing pull it out um, It is a it's a very small one um, but you want to also make sure that you're um, Are able to see through there as well and you want to make sure you take carbon choke cleaner clean that out this is your main jet holder here and you can pull that off eight millimeter wrench you can pull this out blow through it. it's a it's a very big orifice compared to what this main jet is so if your main jet is cleaned out you take compressed air blow through it then um, your main jet holder is good this right here is your air fuel screw and the way you set that is if, if, you've, if you've never messed with it, you don't know if it's ever been messed with, take and you count how many times you screw it down until it's completely closed. So in this case, let's see, there's a half turn, full turn. This is actually, it needs to be about two turns out, so this one was not adjusted correctly. So you do half turn out, full turn, one and a half, two. And that's got a spring in there that'll hold that. Uh, air fuel screw from coming completely out. You never want to go past like three turns and you just want to adjust it according to your manual. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to flip this carburetor up. I'm going to scoot these parts out here so this, they don't start going all over the place. We've got four Phillips screws on the top here on this top cap and what I like to do, there's also a spring in here. I like to put my thumb up top here while I undo these screws and that kind of keeps things from falling apart here. They're not gonna, parts aren't gonna just jump everywhere. It's not that stiff of a spring, um, but it's got a diaphragm underneath here. And you don't want that diaphragm to rip if it, if it comes up too quickly. One more Phillips screw here, kind of behind this hose. Alright, now we're able to pull that diaphragm or pull this top cap up. You know, be careful you don't rip that diaphragm. A lot of times that diaphragm will stick to the top cap or it'll stick to the carburetor. In some areas you pull it apart, it could potentially rip that diaphragm. So pull that cap off carefully. You, you can pull this spring out and then take your finger, just push up on here. Again, if it's stuck to your carburetor, make sure when you're pushing it up, you're very careful so it's not ripping that diaphragm. Diaphragms aren't cheap, you can't repair them. Um, you just have to replace them. Down inside there, you see you've got your needle, and that's what I said runs through your main jet area right here. 
so that needle runs from all the way up here down into your main jet area. And you can adjust that needle. Same thing depending on riding conditions, um, aftermarket parts, stuff like that. To adjust that needle, take a Phillips screwdriver, uh, go inside of this, turn it about a quarter turn, and you can then take that needle jet, well, maybe we need to go a little, oh, there we go. I must have went just slightly too far. Take that needle jet then, push up, and that'll push this top holder up, then your needle's right here. Wanna make sure that you've got a washer underneath of this um, needle jet here. Very small washer, but it makes a big difference. This needle is adjustable. There's one, two, three, four. There's five settings, and right now we're in the middle setting. To change that setting, just take this clip off, move it to a different slot there. You wanna do that to factory settings. Same thing like I said earlier, depending on riding conditions and, and aftermarket parts. So going back together, take that washer, slide it on your needle, and I like to take small pliers just to make sure everything stays in place. Kind of tip that needle back so it doesn't fall off of there. Take and slide that without dumping that washer off of there. Slide that down in there. Then we can take our holder there, put it in there. You can put it in about any direction and then just kind of wiggle it down and then you'll feel it snap into place. Then to put this back into the carburetor, what I do is take, a lot of times if, you, if you've got carbon choke cleaner on this diaphragm, or if you've um, got gas on this diaphragm, or if it's been sitting on a bench with grease and oil on it, a lot of times this will shrink or expand. And so you wanna make sure it's back to the normal uh, dimension before you put it back together. I take and I tip that thing down like that, and then I take my finger, stick it through here, and you can see it coming out the bottom of that carburetor. I take and slide this down. I do that so it doesn't go down too far causing that diaphragm to flip up. And I'll show you why here in a second, but you wanna make sure when you're doing that that your needle slides down into your main jet holder. Now I like to take my finger then and hold up so it doesn't come down when we put this spring down. Still holding it, take this cap, set it on there. If you put this, if you slide this all the way down, I'll show you what it does there. It pops this diaphragm up and then you put this cap down on there and it could pinch that uh, diaphragm and that's not good. You don't want it ever pinched. Um, it'll cause it to rip or it'll cause it not to flow right. Um, so we're gonna pull this back down the way that it was and that gets us in the correct position. And you wanna make sure you have this rubber tab lined up on that carburetor there. And then also same thing on your cap. Take, set it down, still holding with your finger up and then a lot of times you can feel it kind of pop into place. So take these screws in, put them back in there. Once you get Two of them across from each other, snugged up. You can let go with your fingers. And that diaphragm acts as a seal, so you don't need any other gasket or seal on there. But again, you can't, can't replace or you can't repair that gap of that uh, diaphragm. So you want to make sure that's in good condition, going back together. I've seen people use sealant stuff like that, but the problem is that adds weight to it, and it it, uh, it won't open and close correctly or it'll get caught up. All right, we got all four. Now a good way to check that, and this isn't a foolproof check, but you can take and uh, hold your carburetor like this, take compressed air, and blow in this top slot here. And you see that it slides that, um, it opens and shuts this slide. So that's exactly what you want it to do. We're going to set this carburetor up like this. We're going to put our pilot jet in right in the center. No springs or washers on this one. We just stick that pilot jet in there, tighten it up. Smaller of the two jets, they look identical, but one of them is just miniature compared to the other one. The smaller one goes in the side here, and this can be a challenge because of this idle screw being in the way. But you want to make sure you get it in there straight, make sure you get it started straight. Like I said, that can be a challenge. All right, get it in there, snug it up. All right, now we got your main jet. That 
sits right down on top of that main jet holder. Snug it up. I like to double check these because your carburetor is actually going to be sitting this other way like this. And so a lot of times these can walk themselves out if they're not snugged up properly. Take your, um, your needle here, stick it in the slot for your float, slide that needle down. Take your pan, slide it through. You've got to move this um, bowl around, or this uh, float around to make sure that it's snugged up. Take a small screwdriver or something, just tap it in there. Make sure it's completely seated. If it's sticking out too far, your uh, bowl won't go all the way down. So you wanna make sure that's about even on either side. Take that cap then, make sure you inspect this O-ring, make sure it's in good condition. Set that on there, take our four Phillips screws. Set them in there, tighten it up. We'll go through and snug all those screws up to make sure they're exactly how we want them. So that is a carb clean on a Honda Foreman 450. Check back for more videos on the 450 Honda.